Welcome to the Ripple of Change podcast, Searching for Our Quadruple Aim, where we highlight, celebrate, and extol others creating positive change in healthcare and beyond. I am your host, Dr. Otten, and today's topic is cutting the insurance fat. Ooh, I'm excited for this conversation with these two individuals today. And you know what? We're not even going to have a guest co-host. It's going to be all three of us are going to be guest co-hosts and guests, and we're just going to roll with it and see how it goes. First off, I'm going to introduce uh, Carl Schusler Jr., who leads Mitigate Partners, a consortium of now 27 employee benefit consulting and brokerage firms. And his passion for fixing the problem of runaway healthcare costs in this country and his desire to treat the employer's money as his own has led him through years of research, culminating in the development of, excuse me, development of his proprietary fair cost health plan. Welcome to you, Carl. And then I'm also going to shift over to Christy Gupton, who is the founder and president of Custom Benefit Solutions and one of the 27 firms that make up Mitigate Partners. Like Carl, she also works with employers who are ready to leave insurer-built plans and trade them for custom-designed, employee-built plans. I love that. Not only that, but she contributes to numerous publications and also has a podcast of her own, Healthcare Solutions. So welcome to the both of you. And we're going to diverge right away from my usual order of things. Uh, As people are aware, I tend to derail things within the first five minutes, so we've already done it. Um, The first question I'm going to throw out there is, I would love to hear the origin of Mitigate Partners. Uh, Well, first off, Dr. Ryan, thanks for having us here. Uh, I know Chris and I both love your message and really the emphasis on provider wellness and everything you've done. And we appreciate you being a guest a few weeks ago on our, on our uh, mitigate zooms, but mitigate was founded uh, by myself and uh, a fellow by the name of Barry Murphy, who was my mentor at a college when I began in the life insurance business. And then I mentored him down this cost containment path. And you can ask him, he'll tell you that, or he, he may, he might lie. He tends to do that. No kidding. But um, he, we we kind of were out. I was speaking a bunch around the country here and there and was doing a lot of different things and I guess had some heightened visibility. And with that, we just kind of said, you know, we mitigate risk. We do, uh, you know, cost containment, risk management and employee benefit consulting. And, and that kind of made sense. So we just kind of banded together and it was alliance of independent thinkers. And uh, we were able to pull resources together and access different things. We have a chief marketing officer now, and that's really what, you know, all the dues go to pay for. So it was just a a like-minded group of people that came together, but they're fiercely independent. Christy, don't listen to me. I promise you. I wish she would, but she doesn't. Of course, she (laughs) wished I'd listen to her too. So, but the good and bad of Mitigate is it's fiercely independent. Uh, advisors. So everybody stands on their own. That's fantastic. And, and Christy, I would love to maybe hear your thoughts along that thread as well. And and good, I, I got to say, good job, Carl. I, I warned him about the length of his answers and said I was going to start to play Jeopardy music if he went too long. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Christy, we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, y- you know, in, early in, um, um, I think 2017, um, I started uh, learning about different, you know, different paths that were being paved uh, for advisors who really wanted to do something different. I mean, most brokers uh, who are just selling insurance uh, instead of advising their clients, um, you know, they're just they have a, a pretty bad uh, deal, I think. <laughs> they just uh, have something to sell. And and when that product isn't performing uh, the way they told their client it would perform, then they get thrown out with the bathwater. They're the baby in the bathwater, right? So they're tied to like a certain type of product. And um, when that's not working, th- they're screwed. And I just didn't want to be in that position anymore. I wanted to be a, a trusted advisor, um, someone who thought strategically 
and um, I was looking for longitudinal results, you know, and of the ability to improve and create um, better outcomes year over year. And so I wanted to have a uh, like a, a rolling three year strategy with my clients so that we could tackle low hanging fruit and then we could also have long range goals. Um, and again, like Carl said, around not around health insurance, <laughs> but around risk management, population health, things that are uh, just let's just call it a higher acumen than what most brokers are talking about if they're just selling something. So when I met Carl, um, I think around 2018 and I invited him to come to my town and um, speak at a forum, like a town hall type of forum that I was helping host um, right around the opioid crisis, the, the earliest, um, you know, origins of the opioid crisis. And I knew that he knew and, I, and we both knew that the big insurance, um, big pharma, big PBMs, you know, all the bigs in healthcare uh, were at the core of that problem. Um, and so I, I wanted to make sure he had a platform to tell everybody in my town about that. So I invited him and then we've just been close ever since then. And, um, I really appreciate what mitigate partners stands for and, uh, what we're all doing as a group. Hey, Dr. Rod, I got yeah, a time yeah, out. now, much like the presidential debates, and I know we're not going to get political. Christy got to go for, I was watching about four minutes, not quite four minutes, three and a half. And I only got a minute, but all right, that's fine. Let's move on. I, I, Carl, I'm not going to lie. I might keep that in there. This is great. This is, you know, part of, part of this show is to laugh, you know, and to have fun. You know, it's so missing in so many places, right? And, you know, you go to these meetings and everybody's stuffy and, and so on and so forth. Goodness gracious. Like ultimately we are in healthcare. We are, making life and death decisions for people. And we're all human beings and we can't forget that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, so as, as much as, you know, you can, you could keep the clock on me too, Carl, this could be part of the fun game of the ripple challenge maybe today. Uh, uh, Chris, Christy's the best and, and uh, she deserves that floor for sure. I was, Oh no, no, no. So this I, is I, great. I love, I, love, I love to hear, I love to hear. And, you know, she's, she's, you know, she's, Unlike some of those things on TV that are rather irritating, Christie's pleasant. It's like music to your ears. So. Well, and there's this is this is awesome. I love this. This is why I love doing this show because it just brings out, the, frankly, the best in people at times, the laughter, the joy, and you can see the passion for both of you in the work that you're doing. And I wanted to double click on what Christy had said a little bit, and maybe hear from you, Carl, on this one with the whole broker concept versus advisor concept. And, you know, you, you, in your comments, you talked about misaligned incentives, or I might even make the case that some of the incentives in regards to brokers are perversely, well, add the adverb there, is that an adverb? Anyways, the perversely misaligned, you know what I mean? And, and they're just not working towards the employer or the patient's best interests when they're doing things. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that a little bit. Go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say those, those things that you mentioned, those perverse misaligned uh, incentives, those are insurer built plans. So they're built that way on purpose. Carl, what are you, what are you, tell me what you're thinking. I can see it. I can see it. For those of you listening, he could, I could tell he's thinking here. <laughs> Smoke coming out of his ears. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, we've gone nine minutes and cartel have been mentioned. So I guess we're doing pretty good today. But, uh, you know, there's no question. I mean, misaligned incentives, I think Christy said it best. That's where we kind of came up with the phrase kind of an employer built health plan versus an insurer built plan. And, you know, it, the, the insurer built plans are passively managed. I mean, you really don't have a role in it uh, whatsoever. And you're at the mercy of the insurance company. Um, just yesterday, one of my my favorite, one of my really good friends, who's probably the best cartel broker I know, I will leave his name off, but he's a good 
fella and really good friends of ours. And, you know, he's telling me about a, a deal with Cigna and with an independent TPA out of North Carolina, Christy, you know, the one too, uh, one that somebody, you know, used to work there, used to own it. So you're probably giving that all away. Uh, but anyway, uh, they had a Cigna rail network and a $2 million claim came in. And, uh, and I'm sorry, you, I'm, I'm going over my minute, but $2 million claim came in. And I mean, I'm just real worried about that minute. I'm Carl, forget, forget about the minute. This is fantastic yeah. stuff. Keep going. You got as much time as you need. I, well, I am moving uh, up in the edge of my seat because I want to know where this is going. And, and that always means I'm excited. Well, so you go, you keep rolling, man. Yeah. All right. I, I just hope, hope I don't hit my microphone. Um, to, so two million dollar claim comes in, and the, in the Cigna contract, it said you can't audit the claim. Now we can get into all the specifics of what you can do, but the bottom line was there were all kinds of errors as they dug into this thing. The t Cigna called the TPA because again they were renting the network, and most of their rental network businesses was Cigna. Cigna sells that rental network service to independent third party administrators, and with the Cigna rental network, you get their very, very poor utilization management. I don't want to, I can tell you a whole nother story about a school district and what happened there. But the fact of the matter was Cigna called the TPA and says, you pay that claim or we're pulling our rental network contract from you. So you know what the TPA said, Dr. Rod? I mean, their hand, they, they, they got all their clients in this thing. They can't afford to. So the employer plan sponsor who has a fiduciary responsibility, which Christie is an expert in that topic. Um, you know, what are they supposed to do? And I'm and my buddies tell me that I said, I said, you know, blank, I told you. We've talked, he goes, I know you'd appreciate if anybody would have said that's the kind of stuff that goes on all the time. So um you you have to, you know, at the end of the day, these companies didn't get to, you know, sit at the top of the Fortune 500 rankings because they're giving everybody money back. And they sure as heck ain't in the healthcare business, they're in the money making business. There is so much to unpack in there. I am debating which which question to ask next. But I think one of the things that, that came out there was the concept of being a good fiduciary. And I know that's important. And Christy, maybe you want to maybe you want to chime in on that a little bit. Uh, you know, um, I attribute the word fiduciary um, to the law, ERISA which stands for the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974. So fiduciaries, um, really, though, that goes way back in history. A, a good lawyer who's taken, you know, a course on uh, the history of law probably can take it all the way back to its origins. And, you know, I, I don't have that uh, ac acumen. But under ERISA, um the federal government requires employers to um, give a fiduciary standard of care to both retirement plans and health and welfare plans under that law. Well, <clears throat> for the longest time, we have seen um, class action breach of fiduciary suits on the retirement side um, for I don't know, a decade or more, <clears throat> maybe longer. And it wasn't until recently when the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 was passed with all of its transparency rules and other requirements, it actually gave ERISA sort of like new teeth on the health side of, of ERISA, right? So they were always supposed to be... Um, good fiduciaries of employee compensation, employee money, and employee benefits on both sides, retirement and health, but health was getting a pass. Nobody really understood why. And it's through the colleagues of, of some of us um, in Mitigate Partners like Cynthia Fisher and Marshall Allen, may he rest in peace, um, and others, and the um, Dave Chase and the Health Rosetta, and some of us in Mitigate Partners, you know, it's because of those efforts that the Consolidated Appropriations Act was even brought about and signed in 2021. Since then, we've seen a few important things happen, but has really ramped up this year with employees realizing they have been screwed, essentially. <laughs> 
can I can I be that forthright in this podcast? I'm sorry for. Oh, um, oh yeah, that that's that's not even close to some of the language I've used on this podcast. You okay. are good to go. I don't forget, yeah. I was in the Navy, hence all the stuff behind me. So I've gotten really good about not swearing in every single podcast. Right. Okay. I mean, this business makes you want to curse. It really does. But um, this year. We saw one of the first, they're calling it a watershed case. So the day after the Super Bowl, the Lewandowski versus Johnson and Johnson case was filed uh, in a federal court in New Jersey. And it's the plaintiff uh, and Lewandowski on behalf of herself and others. So it's a whole class of employees that works for Johnson and Johnson and realized that their health plan was squandering badly money. Mm. And if employers don't realize it, you know, when you have a health plan where both employer money goes in and employee money goes in, they must um, actively manage that plan to a fiduciary standard of care. Now, the DOL has described what a fiduciary needs to do. They, They need to hold the plan assets in trust, um, one of the the hardest ones to get uh, accomplished, like Carl said, was to pay only reasonable claims and do everything in that health plan, make all of the decisions prudently solely for the sole and exclusive purpose of supporting the plan members. So that's the employees, not Blue Cross, not mm-hmm. United or Cigna or Aetna or any of the rest of them. So if the employer wants to um, be a good fiduciary, they're really going to have to step up to the plate and do things differently. So we aim to help them with that. That's fantastic. I, I might I might shift gears a little bit because I'd like to maybe hear from, from Carl a little bit um, regarding the development of the plan when you when people reach out to you and in your process a little bit, if I can get in your mind a little bit, because you and I have talked about that. And frankly, I love your approach. I think it's fantastic. Um, And don't worry about the clock. We are good to go here. Um, I might have to change the title, like to disregard the clock, but I'd love to hear your approach because I think people would appreciate, you know, your, I don't know if pragmatic is the right word, but it's just logical and it's collegial and it, and it makes sense. So, so please take it from there if you would. Okay. Well, th- well thank you for the compliment. Um, I don't get many of those at home, so it's nice <laughs> to hear here. So very, very much. Thank you. But uh, I can't take a lot of credits, a lot of folks, a lot of folks involved, but, um, and also to go back to your prior question, since I was on the clock and I didn't have time, um, Going back to that, I wanted to say, and our, our friend, uh, one of our fellow Mitigate partners out in Austin, Texas, always says, Rich Haney, a broker makes you broker. And when you were going on consultant and advisor, that was the whole point of that. And and um, I had a, a prospect come back and said, well, since a broker makes you broker, what are you going to charge us? <laughs> so it was uh it was pretty funny. He threw it right back in my face later. But uh, anyway, which was no problem. I, we were all very transparent. What what for the journey of building a, an employer build plan, and for mine particularly that I did, and it and, and it was really spurned uh, because Dr. Rod and we couldn't. I mean, it was it's it unbelievable what you were seeing out there in the marketplace with the insurance companies with their insurer built plans, and obviously working with you know Blue United Signet and the Pick Your Poison they're all passively managed plans. And so I knew with what I was trying to accomplish for clients, trying to be the best fiduciary and steward of their money, treating it like it was ours, that wasn't going to work as I, we unpacked and found the six deficiencies of, of legacy healthcare insurance or health insurance. And basically that led us to, you know, talking to independent third-party administrators who weren't connected with, with the BUCAs as we call them. Um, and, from that process, it was like this. I, the calls went like this. And trust me, getting in that world of independent TPAs, no offense to any of you folks out there, but all TPAs suck is find the least sucky of the suckiest. And I think we're still on that journey, uh, Christy and I are trying to find it. I mean, it's like it's it's a race to the bottom. The bar is so low, a snake can crawl under it, you know. 
But I mean, there's some out there doing good work for sure. So I want to give kudos where they are. But what I will tell you is I called these TPAs and just I'm going to make this short. I called them and I said, hey, I'm having a party. And I and I and so I've got the band locked down. I got the booze. I got the catering. I got the valet parking. But I need someone to host my party. Will you host it? And they would say, well, Carl, you know, you 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 can't serve you know, Sierra Nevada, you know, you have to serve Bud Light. I said, well, we ain't doing no Bud Light. I can promise you that. But anyway, you know, that's, that's what they did. And we don't need, they, that's that, a, that a, so did something happen with Bud Light, I think. Anyway, um, the, the point was we weren't able, they were telling me what I could do. And I said, eh, no, nah, we're not doing that. This is what I'm doing. And when I'd meet them, I'd said, listen, if, if, um, if, um, I'm struggling here. If Ted Cruz is on the right and Bernie Sanders is on the left, they haven't even invented my party. I'm so far out there. I'm going to warn you before we get started today. And so basically through that journey, I've met some TPAs that said, you know, for us, Dr. Otten, when you bring in your components to cost containment and risk mitigation, they have some they use as well. And many of them get paid a component or percentage or something of that solution. And I said, I got better solutions. I want to bring my party to you. Will you administer my party? And there was a few that said, sure. And the great part about that was anything that we put in, whether it's a cancer solution or a chronic kidney solution or a nurse navigation, the charge the client got was the charge they gave. It was not run through the TPA. And that's how we built it. So we, we couldn't get what we wanted. So honestly, wasn't trying to do anything. I, I didn't want to do all that, but we didn't have no, any choice. And now you see a lot of people doing it and you see all these concocted level funded plans. And I'm telling you, we we did this. It had its inaugural launch July 1, 2016. Um, uh, That's when it started. And um, and it's it's had some very blessed results and it's been on in force for a long time now. So it's not new. It's going on its ninth year. This is fantastic. And I think it's these efforts that are really, you know, that where we challenge the status quo or the legacy things. If you talked about, I'm intrigued about the six uh, different, I think it was definitely. I can call them out. Well, me. yeah, go ahead. All right. Be quick. I, this is fast. So I'm not going to explain them all, but there, what we, we as we were looking at, and it was Barry Murphy and myself initially, we were looking at these pro program, these health plans, health insurance plans, and we identified in the six deficiencies that we tried to solve with fair cost and employer built plans. Christy, everybody's doing it. However, they do it, they're trying to solve it. Was this number deficiency number one is basically embedded conflicts of interest, i.e., misaligned incentives, i.e., the cartel. Um, number two would be the lack of cost and quality transparency. Number three was the traditional PPO discount game. Number four was the fraud, waste and abuse medical billing errors that 99% of all hospital bills generated are wrong. Uh, that's a fact, Jack. When If you want to have dinner and lunch and breakfast with me, I can go into more detail. And then the, 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 next, the next one was the, uh, the pharmaceutical shell game. And you remember that, 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 those pictures of people. Like you go to a Braves game at Truist Park, they move the shells all around and you try to figure out where it is. That's pharmacy game, pharmaceutical shell game. And then lastly was the lack of information and data. It's hard to manage that which you can't measure. And if healthcare represents number two or benefits represent two or three on your P&L, your profit and loss statement, and you can't get any data, how the heck can you manage it? So that was the that was a six. And what we did is we turned those six deficiencies into the six opportunities in healthcare. And we've given that talk a bunch of times and get real bored. Are you having trouble sleeping? Don't use melatonin. Just go watch a couple of those videos. You'll fall asleep in about one second. But anyway. That for the audience, there is so much going on to unpack there. I encourage you to follow up with the um, show and or production, and I'm betting we can get some links to it. Um, I don't 
Yeah, maybe some it'll put them to sleep, but I'm guessing uh, those that are digging into that really are going to get a lot of value out of it. Uh, Christy, I, I... there, hey, there's a good one in Owensboro, Kentucky, at a chamber of commerce, I think. And uh, I looked out the audit. You could see, I think it was the uh, oh my gosh, the what river was Ohio River coming in the background. Beautiful venue, and I took a picture and uh, <laughs> Christy Murphy, I sent it to Murphy. And this was October 20, and I got COVID on that trip. I was one of the first. I mean, I'm, not everybody had COVID. It was, you know, new then. And uh, I ended up getting COVID that coming back. But I took a picture and, and out there. And I, this is unrelated, but it's funny. He goes, where are you at a Joe Biden rally? I mean, it was everybody was spread out 50 feet apart. I know you scratched that. I, hey, I'm a libertarian, just for the record. <laughs> Oh, this is so good. You know, I, I, the laughter is just fantastic. Christy, but you looked like you were, had something on the tip of your tongue uh, as Carl was talking there. So I'd love to give you an opportunity. And then maybe after you chime in, we'll shift gears a little bit and go to a ripple challenge question because I've been really dying to do this one today. Well, you know, I want the physicians, especially who listen to your podcast, to understand that um, nothing good can come from a patient encounter with a doctor who is stressed out, underpaid, um, treated like a slave, um, and, you know, can't get their head above water with all of the, um, you know, the, the cartel documentation that they want. So the only way a doctor can be able to practice the way they want to practice is uh, through health plans like the Fair Cost Health Plan. Uh, the plan I designed is called Sunlight Health. <clears throat> There's just no way in fee for service that doctors can be good doctors. I'm sorry. I know that's a very bold and uh, a statement is probably going to, you know, win me some enemies. But in fee for service, that that's what um, Carl des des described as one of the uh, deficiencies, right? The PPO discount game. Um, I want to call it money laundering. And, and how can doctors be um, associated with that and actually practice medicine the way they were trained to, the way you know good and well down in their heart they want to practice? So I love the theme of your show because it's all about the quadruple aim. And Really, um, when we don't assert what our knowledge and build plans based on uh, achieving the quadruple aim, then what's this all for? You know, there there was probably six mic drop moments in that, uh, Christy. So thank you. That that is fantastic. What about well, me? Well, I don't know. Maybe there was three in yours, Carl. I, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm teasing you. I'm totally teasing you. Uh, no, this is great. Th no, this is this is fantastic. I think it, 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 I think the anyway, audience I'm is going to get a ton from this, you know, and, and, and really that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate people about difficult topics, get the word out there about doing different things in healthcare. You know, frankly, I'll go to the I, I don't always do this, but actually this is how the book Ripple of Change is how Carl and I connected. We, I wrote about Mitigate Partners because I thought some of the work that they were doing was absolutely brilliant. And at the time, I didn't know Carl at all. Um, I just thought the work was genius. And so I wrote about it. And then fast forward however many months, um, here we are talking about it. But on the you back. You didn't use that word genius. He's going to repeat that for the next six months. Christy, we can don't worry. We can edit this all out and 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 massage the the adjective down a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But on the back, I say, you know, uh, I envision ripple of change following my version of the Pareto principle. If I draw blood from 20% of people by ripping the Band-Aid off, the other 80% can start to heal. You know, and the percentage probably isn't that high, but I'm fully aware that. As we go through these conversations and topics, there are people that are going to be pissed about what we're talking about. And that's just the reality of the situation. But I think the vast majority of people in this country, if they truly knew what was going on, would be totally on board with what we're talking about without a doubt. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. I think we'll do a ripple challenge question. Um, 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go to probably Carl first on this one, and then we'll go to you, Christy. Uh, and after that, we'll have you both give one additional thought that you'd like to impart to the audience. And with that, please, any plugs, websites where people can reach out to you, et cetera. All right. There's no rules to the Ripple of Challenge question. You can answer however you like. Um, Carl, are you ready? I was born ready, fair, pal. Fair Giddy enough. Up. What is your uh, favorite? Non SEC football team. <laughs> oh, man. Woo! Uh, I, I'm not speechless often, <laughs> um, but uh, non SEC football team. There's one in the ACC that's really good. Well, you're thinking, Carl, because I knew I, I knew this one might catch you off guard a little bit. I'll, I'll, everybody knows I'm a big Arsenal supporter, which is actually a soccer team in London. So that gives you the direction you could take with this. Christy, while Carl is is probably debating what adjective to call me at this point, I'd like to hear from you. What is your favorite non-SEC football team? Oh, well, baby, I am Tar Heel born and Tar Heel bred, and when I die, I'll be Tar Heel dead. So go go Carolina Lina. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And Carl, you know what? You can you can take the fifth here if you need to. It's okay. No, I'm old. I, no, I, I will say this. I love college football. Anybody knows that, and I like to watch a lot of teams. Um, it would pay me to say it as a kid. My granddaddy uh, was in the farm implement business, and he would uh, deliver. He he did. That's the work he did. He was spent time in Ohio, and he'd always bring me back Buckeyes. Now, I can't stand Ohio State, but at that point in my life as a little kid, I liked Ohio State. And then there was Art Sleaster and the whole gambling thing that happened and all that. But, you know, at that time. But other than that, and obviously I don't care for them at all now, especially their head coach. Um, I I don't know. You know, I, Kirby Smart, I'm at, I remember when they asked Kirby Smart, did you ever, when he was went to Georgia to play football, and now he's the coach, as you know, he said, did you, he was down in Bainbridge, Georgia, not far from the Georgia, Florida line. And they said, uh, Curry, did you ever think about uh, going to Florida, you know, to school? And he went, no. So my answer, and then zero is what he says a lot. So I don't know that I have a a favorite. I mean, I, you know, did I pull for that was, honestly? That was, I mean, Carl, I, I love I love it all. I don't pull against them, but um, I like all of them. I, I don't mind North, I don't mind the Tar Heels. I don't. I don't mind a lot of those. I'm just not really sure they play football. Yes, but, you know, do you, do you have a favorite SEC football team? Well, that's a difficult <laughs> question. Um, gee, uh, and I forgot to wear my G <laughs> pen today. The, the dog, Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, I love Go dogs. This is great. Perfect answer, too. I love the story of your grandfather. That's so cool. Um, all right. Well, I'd love to hear from both of you. Um, one a final thought for the audience and how everyone can get a hold of you. Um, Christy, if you want to go first, and then we'll go to you, Carl, and then we'll wrap it up. Sure. Um, I think, you know, just the final thought would be, look, uh, if you're an employer, you have choices. And you can vote with your dollars, right? You can vote for the bigs and put your dollars with the bigs. Personally, I think that's the wrong fiduciary choice, and I can prove it. Um, but... If you want to be a good fiduciary, you want your employees to have the best access to the best care at the best price and have solid outcomes and reduce and stabilize your costs on what is likely your your second biggest expense on the, you know, on the expense side of your balance sheet, then you can vote with your dollars and choose a plan that's not the, you know, one of the bigs and we can help design it for you, custom design it for exactly your, what your work first workforce wants. So I think that's my final thought. Well, and, and how can people find you and get a hold of you? And, and this information will be in the show show notes as well, but please impart that information as well. Yeah, sure. Um, my firm's website is at custombenefits.work. Um, but I'm on the mitigatepartners.com uh, website too, and I can be found there as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And Carl, the floor is yours, my friend. All right. I'm going to try to unpack this in a minute. 3429. All right. Um, I, I love, I mean, I don't, I just basically say ditto Christy. I mean, and thank you for your time today. No, her, her what she said is, is excellent. Um, 
I would say that to the employers it, it, that you've heard things from your brokers who continue to make you broker for 9,000 years. And what we're doing is Chris used to say, all it takes is a good advisor and a, and a, all, and a courageous employer. Um, all it takes is a good advisor and a, and a little courage, as she would say. There's really no courage needed. There's, we have tons of examples of companies that have already done this. Some are 9,000 people, employees. So people go, how big, how, how big is too big to do this? I don't think there is. And it's a journey. Crawl, walk, run, fly. It's a journey. And we are here to meet you where you are. But you don't have to keep sending all your money to Wall Street. You can get it back to Main Street. And you, most of the businesses and most employers out there, you know, the smaller ones, at least, they work in a community and they want the community to support them. But yet they're sending all their money to Wall Street. How about supporting your community? How about support, supporting your community pharmacists? How about keeping all the money local that you can do when you do an employer built plan that's built for you? It's health insurance your way and on your terms, no one else's. And I think that's the biggest difference. And it's 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 not that hard to do. It has a struggle. It, it, it's a challenge initially. It's it's bumpy. But it works. And we have a gazillion examples if you go to our website and, and look at it. And just to, just to be clear, uh, how can everybody get a hold of you, Carl? Um, I really don't like people, so I don't want anyone to call me. But uh, now um, it's uh, you, you can find you can find me at uh, www.mitigatepartners.com. And I know you'll have in the show notes all our emails, Twitters, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. We have all that stuff with Mitigate as well. And then Christy is, a, you know, all over the social media. She's a tremendous writer. You can get her in all her social media outlets as well. So, um, but that's the best way. And, and by the way, the old way, if you, if you can pick up that Alexander Graham Bell phone, 404-277-7852. I know people forgot how to use that, but it still works. Outstanding. This has been so much fun. I think we might have set a record for laughs in the show which I think is outstanding. As always, I'm going to leave the audience with what positive ripple of change will you create today? Grab your copy today. Ripple of Change is available in hard, soft, and ebook formats. More information at www.ourquadrupleaim.com. Thanks for listening. And let's turn ripples into waves of lasting change. Stay tuned to this podcast as we search for examples of our quadruple aim.